on the phone. It's a pleasure to welcome to the program Richard Kim. He's the executive editor of TheNation.com. Welcome to the program, Richard. Hi, Sam. Thanks for having me on. Uh, now, uh, Richard, right, let's let's uh, let's get a little bit remedial here in terms of the Defense of Marriage Act. Uh, by now, I think, um, if anyone's not aware that it was uh, found unconstitutional by the Supreme Court, then um, I'm surprised they have the capacity to uh, to listen to this. But let's let's go back. Give us the history of the Defense of Marriage Act, because um, I'm not. Or let's start with what it is or what it was, I should say. Right. Well, there are actually several parts of the Defensive Marriage Act, and the part that was struck down yesterday is Section 3. Um, and that's the part that says the federal government doesn't have to recognize marriages that are performed, um, same-sex marriages that are performed in states. All of this was um, passed in 1996 and signed by Bill Clinton, and his argument about why he passed the Defensive Marriage Act has always been that it was, he was trying to forestall um, a federal constitutional amendment, um, which would be much more difficult to, to remove. And as we know now, now now know, um, Clinton uh, a few months ago said he no longer believes in the Defense of Marriage Act and, and had his urge the justices to repeal it. So Section 3 is what has been struck down. There are other sections of the Defense of Marriage Act, and those say, for example, that, that other states don't have to recognize uh, marriages performed, let's say, in New York. Um, and that is still on the books um, and um, is an obstacle to marriages being recognized in all 50 states. All right. I want to. I, I, I want. Well, let's let's deal with that 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 issue. I mean, how from a legal standpoint? I mean, if the if the um, uh, it seems to me that this uh, decision was based less on a state's rights uh, principle and and more on a uh, equal protection principle. How, if that's the case, and maybe that assessment is wrong, but if that's the case. Um, how is it that the other sections, particularly that section in terms of uh, uh, some type of reciprocity between states, how is it that those can stand? Well, th that section was not challenged in this particular lawsuit, so it, it wasn't even up for, for question. Um, the decision itself was in part deference to the states. I mean, it, it, there, there was an argument advanced by the, the lawyers in um, the Windsor case, um, as well as by Justice Kennedy, that there should be deference given traditionally to states' you know, uh, marriage laws, and that that has consistently been the, the principle. Um, but there also was a very strong equal protection element to the decision, and you could read you know, the tea leaves there and, and see that Justice Kennedy was really laying down, I think, some precedent to challenge these, these other laws. Um, that litigation will definitely happen. It's already happening on the state level in Nevada, for example. Um, these cases will go forward, and I think one day soon, um, you know, in the next five, ten years, the Supreme Court will hear a, a case about the constitutional bans on marriage that exist in 30-plus states now. So is that, I mean, I mean, I mean, give me a sense of what you think from a, from a strategic sense on, on, on what we will see in terms of these cases, what cases are already in the pipeline. Will we see uh, cases first bubble up in states that have no constitutional, um, the, whose constitution does not in any way reference uh, a, a marriage as, as being between a man and a woman? Will we see states that simply will be challenged in terms of uh, that that make no mention of it at all, but um, don't recognize the marriage. Let's say right. from uh, from New Yorker. Where, what do you right. think the order of these things will happen? Well, so 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 the the lowest hanging fruit here is there are eight states: Hawaii, Indiana, Illinois, New Mexico, New Jersey, Wyoming, Pennsylvania, and West Virginia. Those states do not have a constitutional ban on same-sex marriage, but they also don't have same-sex marriage. So there's a chance there legislatively um, to push through the recognition of same. -sex sex marriage. And that, that, in fact, has already you know, taken place in New Jersey. Um, it's been viewed by Chris Christie. Illinois is working on legislation. New Mexico is working on legislation. Hawaii is working on legislation. So th that is the, the sort of lower hanging fruit. And, and I think um, gay and lesbian advocates are optimistic that they could um, score those wins in the next few years. Um, now, the states that have these uh, marriage bans on the Constitution, in their Constitution, that is a very tough nut to crack. Um, repealing these bans often requires requires two separate sessions of the legislature to repeal it. Um, it has to go through twice 
Um, and most of these state legislatures are dominated by Republicans in some states with veto-proof uh, and filibuster-proof majorities, um, or it's going to take a popular referendum. Um, and these are these are deep red states like right. Oklahoma, Alabama, Texas. Um, interestingly, a lot of the states that are now moving forward, um, thanks to the Voting Rights Act decision, to restrict democracy um, for for minorities. So th- there's a really big uphill battle there in terms of on the state level getting rid of these bans. There could be a sort of um, you know legal magic trick that happens where um, a marriage that was recognized in New York, but it's not recognized in Oklahoma, that, that someone brings suit, um, and the courts rule that Oklahoma has to, you know, recognize these marriages performed by other states. But, you know, given the ruling uh, the other day, um, you know, that, that it does not seem likely the court right now at this moment wants to tackle that question. I think they will have to in the next few years. I, I want to get to the all the, the sort of the, the the material benefits that uh, come with a federal recognition of of marriage, but but before we do, I mean, give me your sense of. I mean, there, there, there's two strategies here, right, in terms of, of these states that have uh, these bans on same-sex marriage or don't address them at all. And, and I wonder from, and perhaps it's, it's irrelevant, but I wonder from, from a societal standpoint, from a sort of a, a sense of how uh, society uh, adopts these, uh, you know, sort of accepts um, mm-hmm. uh, same-sex marriage, which uh, has evolved incredibly fast, at least... In, in in this narrow period of time that we're looking at, I mean, obviously there's been something... The, the majority of Americans now support same-sex marriage, and that, that is a phenomenal change in just in the last few years. So yeah. do you think that it's, that, it's, that it's important that this happen through the courts or through legislatively? In other words, if there's a perception that this is just, um, this is about you know, uh, uh, just about rights that are sort of innate to people in terms of equal protection, as opposed to sort of um, this is something that we're statutorily uh, uh, recognizing. Is there a difference there? Um, you know, there there is a difference theoretically. I think in practice what has happened is that the two have worked hand in hand, that litigation has been a very important strategy. That's why same-sex marriage, for example, is legal in Iowa, of all places, um, and has been legal in Iowa for, for several years now. Um, but, you know, I, I actually think the grassroots initiatives, the, the, the grassroots push, um, is the most important thing. You know, people like to say the cliche that rights shouldn't be up um, for a vote, but in fact, they're always up for a vote. They're up for a vote from Congress and from state legislatures. They're even up for votes in the Supreme Court, which in fact does vote on, the, on these matters and exists in the broader culture and society and is influenced by that. So, you know, I always say that actually the best thing to happen to the gay marriage movement was the loss in Prop 8. Um, that was in 2008, and people became um, agitated, motivated. They became protagonists of their own story. They didn't wait for just for the lawyers to show up or for the cases to go forward. Um, they went to their neighbors. They went on the radio and on TV, and they started their own grassroots organizations. And that push really inspired thousands and thousands, millions of gay Americans to come forward and to make a case um, for their rights. After that, you saw state after state pass gay marriage, Minnesota, Maine, um, for example, Maryland. Um, and, and these states did so democratically um, through the legislative process. Um, President Obama made a, a change that I think you know, was definitely influenced by the shift in public opinion and the concern for his future political legacy. Um, and all of that fed into the decisions that were reached yesterday. Um, they, they created the, and I think you know, it's the right perception that history is only going one way in this direction, and it's clear that Justice Kennedy wanted to be on the right side of that history. Uh, just to outline for us sort of the, 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 the material implications um, in terms of, uh, of a federal recognition of, of marriage. I mean, it, 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 it really is so broad-based um, that, I mean, it, it, ranging from, um, from uh, uh, Edith Windsor getting, uh, I guess, a, a rebate check of $385,000, which, of course, yep. not what this is about as much, but, but in some respects, it, it is. It's another one of those things where the legality sets the framework for, uh, for the acceptance of, of, uh, of equality. Yeah, well, you know, there are hundreds and hundreds of federal rights at stake, including, um, you know, rights about taxation, Social Security benefits, 
Um, even, for example, their, their, their uh, laws about state parks and entry fees into state parks um, regarding whether or not you're married. Um, so it's, there, there are hundreds and hundreds of, of these statutes um, on, on the book. Um, the interesting thing that I'm looking at now is how the Obama administration is going to interpret this decision. Um, they've convened a special task force at the Department of Justice to look at the hundreds of ways that they will have to change federal statute, um, either through executive action or um, changes within agencies, or in some cases, I, I think acts of Congress will be required, um, and that's going to be a, a tough haul given um, the, the Republican control there. But um, it's not immediately clear you know, that the decision overnight um, gives all of those benefits to same-sex couples. For example, the IRS looks at the state in which you reside. Yeah. So if you were married in New York, a state that recognizes same-sex marriage, and you move to Alabama, a state that does not, currently um, the IRS is not going to recognize you as, as a married couple. The Obama administration wants to change that. Um, the Department of uh, Defense, and this is one of the, the weird things here, they look at this at the state where your marriage is performed in. Um, so, you know, already Chuck Hagel has said that they're going to recognize marriages um, that were performed in New York, even if you now live in North Carolina, for example. But there's going to be a very meticulous, very arduous process to comb through all the federal statutes at all the agencies and change the laws and regulations so that same-sex couples um, who are married in the states, the 13 states that um, recognize same-sex marriage, will have their marriage rights recognized no matter where they end up living. I mean, it's sort of fascinating that there were all these idiosyncrasies in the law, which, of course, nobody really paid attention to that much because uh, y it, it, was, it was immaterial more often than not. I mean, I guess that's what sort of this, uh, this, uh, this represents. Now it is relevant where you were married, where, uh, where it, it may not have been before. Yeah, there, there, there's it, it's this marriage law is actually very, very complicated, and and there's a uh, jurisdiction that states have. Um, there's the question of the full faith and credit clause. You know, are are marriages performed in one state legally recognized by another? And the the precedent there um, has traditionally been to give states some deference in constructing their own marriage laws and recognizing some marriages and not others. Um, and then there are all the the thousand plus federal benefits that that accrue. So it is um, you know a very complicated map. Um, Straight people didn't really have to pay attention to right. this and don't. Um, someone like Edith Windsor absolutely did. And, right. and that's why, you know, I saw her talk yesterday in front of the Stonewall Inn after the decision, and she said um, that when she discovered that she was going to be taxed um, just because she had married a woman, if she had married a man, she would not have been taxed 300 something thousand dollars. Um, her sense of injustice and unfairness overwhelmed her, and that's why she brought suit against the federal government. Yeah, it's it's just fat, and and I would recommend uh, people um, uh, just Google her. I mean, her story is is really is stunning. Um, She's an incredible heroine. Yeah, it's it, it really. I mean, it's it's an amazing uh, story, and um, I mean, unfortunately, you know, people have had the opportunity to see her on uh, TV over the past couple of days. Um, let's talk a little bit about the um, uh, about the the beginnings of DOMA because, you know, I I, I how. And maybe, you know, some of this may be moot, but but I think it's important that people understand the context in which um, DOMA came about. Are you skeptical about Bill Clinton's claims that that that, that DOMA was was um, at least primarily an attempt to head off a constitutional amendment, a federal constitutional amendment, um, or or was it more about sort of the the political machinations of the time. Right. I, you know, I don't doubt at all that there was uh, a movement to pass a federal constitutional amendment banning marriage. This is, in fact, something George W. Bush championed when, when he was president. Which I got to um, say, you know, yeah. it was one of the most, uh, of all the moments during the Bush administration, was one of the most chilling moments. I mean, I think I've said this before on this program, but it, I found it to be one of the most chilling moments uh, in, in in my adult life, watching the president go on television and say how sad he was that he was going to have to promote uh, discrimination against a group of people in our country. I mean, that was just sort of stunning. Yeah, I mean, well, he he actually he also said that you know same-sex marriage would be the end of civilization as as we know it. So I, I'm waiting for that end of civilization to happen today. There are parts um, of Massachusetts now that, now that the federal government recognizes marriage. Coming from um, Massachusetts, but, you know, uh, it, uh, there's there's parts of it. I don't know if you've been to Lowell, but uh, that's. 
I'm sorry. I'm making a Massachusetts joke. Go ahead. <laughs> um, you know, but the, the thing is, back in 1996, there was there was fear. Um, you know, Hawaii had had um, passed uh, briefly. Um, the courts there had rec- had recognized same-sex marriage briefly a few years ago, and there was a fear amongst the right wing that you know, once one state passed same-sex marriage, um, all the other states would, would have to recognize it. There definitely was a push um, by right-wing advocates for a federal constitutional amendment. Now, the question is, could we have defeated that without? passing DOMA. Um, you know, a constitutional amendment, as we know, is incredibly difficult to, to get into law. Um, it has to pass through three quarters of the of state legislatures. And there's a thinking on, on the part of some gay advocates that they would have welcomed, actually, that challenge, that, that you know, let's, let's then put this to the, the vote. Um, let's, let's force all these state legislatures and politicians to go on record saying that we want to discriminate against gay people. It would have been a tremendous drain of resources um, from, the, from the Christian right. Um, and and so um, I don't think Bill Clinton needed to pass DOMA in order to forestall the amendment. Um, you know, was he acting in political self-interest to kind of just make this issue go away? Um, absolutely. Right. Um, and, 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 and let's talk about that. I mean, you know, the, the, the theory that that would have been some type of maybe perhaps inciting moment. Let's, let's turn to uh, uh, Prop 8, which... Um, uh, fortunately, is is uh, still dead and uh, dead for always. But uh, the grounds upon which it was um, uh, was killed in terms of standing is somewhat controversial. But just give us a, a slight history of, of of what took place in the uh, Prop Eight uh, fight. Right. So, so there was legal gay marriage in California um, for a brief period. Um, it was court ordered, um, and uh, you know opponents put forward Proposition Eight in 2008. They won that by a very slim margin. It was actually the second most expensive election in 2008 outside of the presidency itself, um, which is stunning to think about. Um, and um, that uh, decision, it, while it didn't invalidate the gay marriages that had already happened, um, it. it uh, it uh, made marriages going forward illegal. Um, it, it said you just can't perform these in California. Um, so there were lawsuits that went forward. Um, the, the controlling decision now actually is a decision made in 2010 um, by a district court judge named uh, Vaughn Walker. Um, and he put an injunction against um, people in the state from enforcing Prop 8. He just said, you, you can't do this. This is unconstitutional. Um, very cleverly, his ruling cited Justice Kennedy on 15 separate occasions, um, mm-hmm. which was clearly, um, you know, awareness that this is going to head to the Supreme Court and that Kennedy would be a, a crucial vote there. It, it turns out that actually Kennedy voted on the other side in the, in the Prop 8 case, that he, he um, thought that actually the, the defendants had standing. Um, the standing issue um, is ultimately what was decided here, and that just basically kicked the decision back um, to, the, to the Ninth Circuit and um, asked them to dismiss it, which means the um, district court ruling is the, is the controlling ruling um, on this. So there wasn't actually, from the Supreme Court, in this instance, a, a grand ruling about you know, gay rights or equal protection. It just said that the defendants in this case didn't have standing. And that's because the state of California itself declined to defend its own law. Um, this is very similar to what the Obama administration did with DOMA. They declined to defend it in, in the Windsor case. And so um, you had um, anti-gay advocates um, ask to be um, the defense in this case, to, to defend the law that California decided not to defend. Um, and the court's ruling was that they just simply don't have standing to bring this in front of the courts. Where is the consistency between um, the the DOMA ruling and the Prop 8 ruling on the question of standing? I mean, what, what, what made those case is different. If the Obama administration is not, um, is not defending the federal law, and the problem for standing in the context of the California law was that the state of California was not uh, defending it, um, where, where's the consistency there? Um, well, in the um, the defense of marriage case, um, the the House Republicans actually um, also uh, decided to defend it. This is John Boehner's decision, um, and there there was some question about their standing there. Um, so so that was possibly a factor. You know, I'm not exactly sure. I'm not a lawyer, honestly, right. and so so the so the minutiae about standing in one case for, versus the other, I'm not totally up to up to speed on. 
All right, yeah, no problem. I mean, I, you know, I just, uh, there, there are some people who, at least in the context of the Prop 8, and, and this is uh, one of the reasons, I mean, I, or uh, that uh, Sotomayor was presumably on the wrong exactly. side of that case, was that uh, people were somewhat concerned with the concept that uh, individuals, citizens of a state, have no standing when a referendum is overturned. Um, uh, uh, and that that brings up a host of other sort of legal questions. But the, 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 the issue in this case was was complicated by the fact that um, the 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 very problem that these defendants had in terms of they couldn't prove that they were harmed by gay marriage was also sort of a, a good reason why uh, was also sort of in some sort of backhanded way also spoke to the validity of of uh, outlying gay marriage. Uh, yeah, you know, and and you know from the legal advocates I speak to, um, you know they they actually think the sort of precedent set about on standing from this particular case is going to be somewhat limited, um, j- just because the the defendants here um, they just couldn't prove that they were actually hurt right. um, by by the the um, making Prop 8 illegal. Uh, now uh, let's talk a little bit about w- what happens next. I mean, obviously the. I mean, is this was this perceived in um, uh, in terms of uh, of this fight for marriage equality? Do, was this perceived, and is it perceived as essentially the, the the critical mass? I mean, is it in other words, are the efforts now sort of more uh, uh, do the, do the efforts? I don't want to say coast, but in terms of like the 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 greatest hurdle was was DOMA that hurdle? DOMA was a huge hurdle. Um, I, 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 by no means is the battle over. Even just on the question of marriage alone, there, there are 30 plus states that have constitutional marriage bans. 37 states don't recognize same sex marriage. So that, that is definitely not a fight that's over. And I don't think it's going to be over in the next year or two. It's, it's going to be a, a quite a long struggle that's going to involve a lot of grassroots organizing as well as litigation. 29 states, Sam, um, in 29 states, you could be fired simply for being gay um, because the Employment Non-Discrimination Act, what's called ENDA, um, hasn't passed Congress yet, um, despite President Obama saying he would he would want to sign that. So, um, you know, in terms of anti-gay discrimination, um, it, 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 this is a very significant step. It's a step that extends rights to millions of, of Americans, um, but it, it's by no means the end of the uh, of the of the struggle. Um, the struggle continues, as Melissa Harris Perry likes to say. And in some ways, uh, I mean, I guess the, the just the the concept of marriage is going to help uh, to 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 eat away at that um, um, at, at at the the resistance to to passing things like ENDA. I mean, maybe not so much in the short term, uh, the the nature of our our politics now, but but I mean. I'm curious, just from a from a from a sort of a, like a, a broad societal standpoint. I mean, do, do, was that point maybe reached just when uh, the majority of the public uh, had no problem with marriage equality? Yeah, you know, the the shift in poll numbers has been just incredibly swift here. Um, five, six years ago, the majority didn't support um, same-sex marriage. They didn't even support um, halfway measures like civil unions or domestic partnerships. A solid majority of Americans um, support same-sex marriage now. It's only moving in one direction. When you poll young people, um, I think that's where um, the change is, is most acute. Young, young Republicans support same-sex marriage. So, um, you know, I, I think just in terms of a political dynamic, it's going to be interesting to see how the Republican Party deals with this. Um, very similar uh, situation to immigration reform. Um, right. You know, they're, they're at, 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 at risk of losing um, perhaps permanently a key demographic, um, not just gay people and not just um, Latinos, but young people of all races and sexual orientations care about these issues. And, you know, if they see their the party fight tooth and nail to to, to maintain discrimination, um, that is going to have, I think, some pretty serious repercussions. Yeah, people should keep in mind that in 2004, uh, g- gay marriage was basically a cudgel used by the Republicans um, as an electoral strategy, and that has completely flipped uh, in, in, in many respects. What, uh, Richard, I mean, what do you think accounts for this? I mean, because, you know, um, I, 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 you know I, sometimes I think that, like, like Things like Ellen, 
frankly, like like that sitcom, um, like uh, Will yeah. and Grace. I mean, I, I I can't help but think. I mean, I look at you know because this has really happened over the course of my of of my adult life, and yeah, it's, it's stunning. Yeah, it, it, is, it is stunning. I definitely think popular culture and, and, and those sorts of things helped. Um, you know, I think something that underlies all this is the fact that same-sex marriage doesn't harm anybody. Um, no one has been effectively able to show that their straight marriage has been harmed by two men or two women getting married in 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 any state um, where where it's it's legal. So um, you know it is one of these rights that was um, opposed by by vast majorities of Americans at one point, um, opposed quite vociferously and and stridently. Um, but I think once it became a reality, people realized um, that it, it actually. Um, does no harm to, to anybody, and you actually saw that in Iowa, which you know has same-sex marriage, and that was um, a court ordered, and there was a big you know kerfuffle about that. There were some judges on that court that were um, voted out in the next election, but now most Iowans accept it. Um, they a lot of them actually applaud it. They're very proud that their state is one of the states that recognize same-sex marriage, and and even the sort of middle there realizes that it, it actually doesn't harm their lives in, in, in any extent. So, um, you know, I think, uh, you know, it's, it's a kind of a no-brainer, and it just sort of takes a cognitive shift to realize that, and, and that's what happened in the last few years. Yeah, it's been stunning, and it's really, um, you know, it's, it's been just incredibly uh, moving to see, uh, to hear the stories and to see the images of, of people yeah. who, you know, have spent... Yeah, in- I- Go ahead. A lot of hard work went into it, you know, so I, yes. I don't want to also discount that, that, that even as it is a kind of a no-brainer, a lot of gay people came out of the closet, they talked to their family, they, um, you know, gave money, they raised money, they um, held um, rallies and, and pushed their legislatures and used their um, fundraising strategically, um, you know, they threatened the Obama campaign, um, we're not going to support you unless you have our backs on this. So, so a lot of hard work also went into this. Where do you think, I mean, where do you think some of that energy, I mean, does that energy still continue to fight uh, for things like uh, ENDA uh, and uh, marriage in other states? Do you think that some of that energy, in other words, has there been, um, you've had a, uh, a culture of, of activism, and, and certainly the, like, you know, there are still uh, fights to be fought, but I wonder if there isn't a dynamic where some people take, what they've learned through this fight and sort of the, 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 the sense of social justice that they've learned in this fight and, and begin to, uh, to branch out? Or is it, is it too soon? Yeah, to well, that's, that's my hope. I mean, there's still tons of work to do on, on just securing um, rights for gays and lesbians, and there's lots of inequality also in, inside the gay and lesbian community. Gays and lesbians are more likely to be homeless. Um, they actually make less money than their straight peers, um, despite the myth of gay wealth. So, that, you know, there's a lot of work to be done there. But I, I do think there is um, a sort of spark of social justice that this, this whole long movement has um, ignited. And I was at the Stonewall Inn yesterday, um, you know, watching Edith Windsor um, talk to a huge crowd there. And one of the interesting things was that one of the speakers brought up the Voting Rights Act case. Mm-hmm. Um, and the entire audience started booing. Um, they were incredibly upset by that decision, and they were very upset that, you know, on the day that they secured rights, the day before, um, minorities um, lost, in, in many crucial ways, the right to vote. Um, and so, you know, you, you, you see that sense of injustice um, uh, and, and the capacity to change that, and I think that um, is, is, is a great spark, and I, I do hope that this sort of energy momentum carries over to other campaigns. It's very interesting also to look at the states now that are going to pass voter ID laws, they've already passed voter ID laws. Those are the same states where there are constitutional bans against marriage. So those are the same states where you have incredibly restrictive abortion laws. Those are the same states where um, a Republican-dominated state legislature is pushing forward anti-union right. legislation. Um, so, you know, I think there is also a hope that, that all of these groups, um, feminists, gays, um, African-Americans, um, environmentalists, that they could come together in the these states um, and create a real grassroots coalition to push back on this far right agenda. Yeah, I mean it is. Uh, it's fascinating to see um, the, the the right um, 
sort of adopt this incredible bunker mentality when it comes to to social change. I mean, I guess that's the, the very definition of it, but it it just seems like it's becoming more pronounced to the extent that you can literally, uh, you know, draw lines around it and, and um, uh, they're that much uh, more isolated. Uh, Richard Kim, executive editor of Nation.com, thank you so much for your time today. Appreciate it. Thank you, Sam.